and welcome back to part five of this build series. This part was actually a part that I wasn't even, I kind of overlooked and overthought completely until I, well, I actually started really thinking about it, and that is all this car buildup on this cylinder. Now, there will be two separate videos, so this will be part five on this, and then I'll have a part, well, whenever I get to it, I'll do it on the uh, pistons. So, what this is, is I'm going to take all this carbon off of the cylinder, sorry, cylinder head, which is all this carbon buildup right here on each individual cylinder. Now what I'm talking about is all of this build up right here. Then I'm going to show you how to get rid of most of that. Or not most of it, all of it. And why it's important to get rid of it. So we'll start with that. The reason why you want to get out, rid of all this carbon build up is one, I mean, it it's flow. You're going to disrupt your, your flow a bit. But the main thing of it is, is creating hot spots. Now a hot spot is basically when it when the air comes in the chamber comes into the piston cylinder wall spark plug ignites comes in with the fuel ignites when it ignites it ignites certain areas which is usually your higher points say like on your piston or on your on your cylinder head where it has build up it'll really focus on igniting just like in that one spot which is why it's called a hot spot you don't want that. You want it to, to disperse evenly throughout the cylinder wall and in the piston or on your cylinder head. So we're going to try to alleviate as much as we can of the hot spotting. And how we're going to do that is by using WD-40. Now you might be asking, why would I use WD-40? W40 is like a solvent. It'll act like a solvent. It'll clean. Now, one thing about W40 is, is if you spray it on like your cylinder walls to prevent rusting, you do have to keep coating it. That way, it can keep protection, keep protection, or else it will basically dry away. So you want to keep your areas lubricated as much as possible. But this, it pulls moisture out, is what it does. But it also cleans, so it act, it's like a solvent. What you're going to want to do, and see, you also use this to clean your cylinder heads off too, and the block. And I'm going to try some methods on how to clean this. And as you've seen, it was, uh, I believe, cylinder number one it was cleaner than the rest of them. That was because I've, I've worked on this already. And I've, I've just kind of wanted to see how it's going to work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the cylinder head down with this W40. And I'm going to let it sit overnight. And the reason why I'm going to let it sit overnight so they can really get into there and really break it down. I'm going to try not to use any scraper or anything to pull all of this out or to get all this car building off. I'm going to try to do it the best I can without doing that. And when I wipe this off, see what I what I did before was I sprayed it on, I kind of rub my finger on it, like this stuff's really hard, this stuff's really hard, this stuff is actually kind of wiping away over here. But what you're wanting to do is get everything out on right here that's going to be inside the pit, the uh, cylinder and anything around your, your valve seats right here. You want to take all of that out as much as possible to alleviate any hot spotting at all. So like I said, I'm going to let this sit overnight and it'll probably be, I know, I'm probably going to let it sit for about 12 hours, if not, or not 12, 24 hours if not somewhere in the range of oh, 
18, 16 to 18 hours. I'll probably check it after work, or it might be later. But I'm just going to put a, a conservative amount, because I have a lot of car buildup around the exhaust ports that I didn't get when I poured in because I did not want to hit the valve seats. And I'm not worried about anything in the water jacket, or the, yeah, water jackets, or even in the oil, because I still, no matter what, I have to clean the cylinder head with carb cleaner, no matter what. Because I still have, like I said, the gasket to go, and you don't want none of this in your oil or in your coolant. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit overnight. And then when I get back to it, I will let you, I will let, I'll let you guys see how good the stuff comes off. Now, like I said, the cylinder one, no, it wasn't cylinder one, sorry, it was cylinder four. It's this one right here. That one I let it sit for 30 minutes and I was able to wipe off a lot. That's why I'm going to let it sit for almost 24 hours and see how much it really is going to pull off. I checked the cylinder heads earlier because I sprayed the cylinder walls down. Not the cylinder heads, sorry, piston tops. I checked those and it was coming right off. Basically, it was, you can wipe it with your finger and you can see it pulling up. When I do the cylinder or the uh, piston tops, I'm going to use Scotch Bright when I do that, but that, like I said, that'll be a whole different video, so we really won't get into that right now. Well, it's been about 15 hours, and don't really see like it seem like it's really soaking in. I mean, it's getting a lot of it out. There, I think if I rub it some, it'll come out. So I'll probably, I will probably have to do some scraping on it. Let me uh, grab a rag. Just kind of wipe it up, and see. And it is turning into a sticky mess now, so I may go ahead and uh, spray some more on it. And then I'll get some stuff so I can actually scrape this head. Um, you're really not supposed to use anything metal when you do it. So a plastic scraper will work, but I'm not quite sure that I'm going to be able to get it with the plastic scraper. I thought soaking it would actually help it out, and it don't really seem like it's doing much good on it. Well, the W40 isn't really working like I was hoping. It was taking off the light stuff, but it's not really taking off the heavy stuff. So I went, and I went ahead to a different approach on it. I got it clean like that. Now this approach was a little bit more aggressive. I'm actually using my Dremel, and it's basically like an eraser that's on it. It's very, very, very fine grit. Let's see if I can. Very fine grit. It came in my kit. It's not taking off any metal. It's just really just kind of polishing the metal, but it's uh, but it's taking off all of the carbon buildup. So I guess this is the approach I'm going to take on. When I'm doing this, what I'm doing is I'm holding the Dremel in one hand and I got it on slow speed. I got it on like, it's about seven right now, six or seven. And I'm just, I'm hitting it. You don't have to put a lot of elbow grease in it at all. You don't have to really push down on it. Just you want to take that carbon build up off. You want to stay away from the valve seats too. And this was in my Dremel kit. I, I said kit. I didn't specify Dremel kit. But the Dremel kit from Harbor Freight, it was in there.
and she is done. It's polished up pretty good. I know it probably looks weird, like my port jobs, you know, kind of like that. But it's it's basically, like I said, it's it's like an eraser. It's not really a sanding stone at all. I mean, I'm, I'm, it is, but it don't take off any metal. It was all the uh, rubbery stone that came off of it. It knocked all of that carbon off. The only stuff I couldn't get is like, if it's like deep down in like the uh, cast casting then I couldn't get it out everything else came out so this is done now besides getting the head gasket off and now but or actually it's not done I take that back I still need to get the carbon out of the chambers right here on the exhaust side there's some buildup I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna do that but I'm sure I'll get it figured out. It's uh, yeah, it uh, everything looks really good now. Um, hopefully this weekend I'll probably be able to get the lap kit. If not this weekend, it'll be the next weekend. I don't know. It, it really depends on scheduling because we've got a lot going on. Just had our new baby last week, so. It's uh, scheduling. It's not. It's really scheduling. I, I'm trying to do this while the baby sleeps in you know, spare time, whenever I, I get a chance. So it will be done. It's coming along slowly, but this is only not almost the middle of November. I still have a good three months left before it has to be running. I would like it to be running and driving in February, like fully figured out in February and if you're a part of Dark Knight, Dark Knight Facebook page you would have seen the picture where I had it in my basement. It is in my basement again. It just makes it easier for me to put the body panels on when I get the body panels but um, it's if the motor and everything's not going in down here. It's just going to be the motor going up in it or not the motor, sorry. Putting on the body panels, drilling everything that needs to go in, running the wiring and everything, and then the bike will come out. But, yeah, for the cylinder head, pretty much only thing that's left is lapping the valves, getting this carbon build up out, which it should come out when I uh, put uh, use carb cleaner when I do the, the head. So, it's going to take some work. But I'll be able, I should be able to get it out. If not, I may try some degreaser. I don't know. I, I've seen some other things on the internet. Um, or also heard of the uh, scrubbing bubbles. That stuff works for the bathrooms, or I think that's for the toilet. One of the two. I heard that it works on the carbon buildup, so we'll see. I'll try some, uh, maybe some oven cleaner or something. But should be able to get all this stuff off. Once I get that all cleaned up, like I said, lapping the valves, and then it's going to be cams, or valve springs, maybe retainers. I'm still not quite sure on the retainers, but it might be the retainers, uh, valve springs, and then I can put that all together, and it'll be ready to go on the, on the uh, actual block. I still need to clean the pistons, which I'll have another video on that. And then once the pistons are clean and the deck is clean, then it is ready for the, uh, and this is all done, and valves and everything are in, lap and everything, the uh, cylinder head will be ready to go on. And then it'll just be a matter of waiting for the cams to come in. I'll, uh, I'll check the, uh, the uh, shims for the valves. I'll check the valve clearance on it, or the valve shims. I'll also check the valve clearance on it and make sure it's not going to smack the uh, pistons. And then it'll be a matter of going over to my buddy's house, degreeing the cams. Once I get that done, it's ready to throw back in the bike. And then it'll be ready to fire up. Now one thing, uh, I don't think I threw it on Dark Knight Facebook page, but the wiring harness still kind of looks like a mess, but it's like really cleaned up compared to what it was. Well, uh, I got everything figured out. I got everything exactly where I 
know where it needs to go. I got all the wires laid out that I need to still run. Um, the switch, that needs to be ran. And then ignition switch, I need to put uh, an end on that. And it's pretty much like once the motor part is done and ready to go back in, it's going to be very, very, very easy. It'll be very fast to, like, to completion. Um, said I would like to try to get it running in January. I initially wanted to do it in, in December. I don't see that happening, especially with uh, having my buddy degree the cams. I got to go off of his timing or his schedule. And, of course, it has to work with my scheduling. So, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that comes out. But, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, Hopefully, this build series is really helping people out. Or, you know, maybe even teaching people stuff that they didn't know or was afraid to do. Like, as far as the porting the cylinder head out. Or, you know, blending the valve guides. Cleaning the cylinder head. Pretty much anything that I've done, like my transmission video, I even showed my mistake that I did and how I corrected it. Like, hopefully I'm teaching you guys and giving out the good enough content the on how to do stuff. I'm, I just want people to, to not be afraid to do it and not be afraid to take a chance at doing it and thinking they're just going to ruin everything. Um, you can mess things up, especially if you force things to go or you just completely just like go crazy with the Dremel or whatever or just anything. You can break stuff when you're trying to take it apart, but don't be afraid to do it. Um, take the chance. Just take your time when you do it. Uh, owner's manuals, you can get those online, especially for the 506 1000. You can download those for free. To your phone, your computer, your laptop, tablet, whatever. You can download those for free online. All you gotta do is type in your year and CC of it, and then uh, owner's manual, and then it should pop up as a PDF. You download it, and there you go. That's how I got a lot of my information. Actually, I would say about 95, no, probably about 100% of everything except for recording. I got out of my owner's manual. I would look at it, do it, record it while I was doing it. So get an owner's manual, download it, whatever you got to do, and don't be afraid to take a chance on, on building your bike. Like I said, hopefully my build series is helping people out. I'm guessing I'm probably going to have anywhere, this is number five, probably anywhere, golly, probably... 15 I think parts to this I don't know it kind of depends I keep finding more stuff to do adding more parts to this video it's uh, not going as quick as I thought it was going to I thought there's just going to be a few parts to the build series and that's it um, thank you to the new subscribers that have subscribed to the channel uh, comments are always welcome and uh, say go to the Dark Knight Facebook page I haven't been really posting anything on there like picture wise I do every once in a great while, but usually if I do, it's on there way before it's ever on the YouTube channel, and you can kind of see what I'm doing. Sometimes I don't even post things on the YouTube channel that's actually on the uh, Dark Knight Facebook page. Uh, I think I already mentioned it before. It would have been in video number two or three, something like that, maybe four, that I will have a big announcement. I'm just kind of waiting on the package to come in. Um, if it don't come in this week or by the middle of next week, I'll go ahead and make that announcement. But I was really hoping to have something so I can really show the visual on what the what it is and why I'm pleased why I have it and why you should strive for your goals to, to just like be the best that you can. Um, and it will change the channel a little bit. So, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, share, and have a good day.